Okay, uh, we're continuing with uh, finding determinants. This time, I'm teaching you to. Uh, uh, I'm demonstrating the second technique. It's called using diagonals. Uh, we've already found a determinant of this, or have we? I don't know. Okay, all these numbers are running together to me. Anyways, okay, I'm gonna stop mumbling now. Uh, when using diagonals, what we're gonna do is this is the original determinant we want to find. I'm sorry. This is the original matrix we want to find a determinant of. We're going to take the first two columns and copy them. And then what we're going to do is multiply diagonally. Okay, kind of like when we find a 2 by 2 matrix, we multiply all the numbers this way. And what we're going to do is add them. And then we're going to multiply all the numbers the other way and subtract those. So here we go. So we're going to multiply negative 1 times negative 2 times positive 2. That's going to give me positive 4. Plus 3 times negative 1 times 0 gives me 0. Plus negative 3 times 4 times negative 5 gives me positive 60. And then we go in the other direction. So we're going to go 0 times negative 2 times negative 3 is going to be 0, but I'm subtracting these. Not that it makes a difference with 0. Then we're going to go negative 5 times negative 1, times negative 1, so it's minus a negative 5, and minus, then 2 times 4 times 3. That's going to be, what, 24. So let's just simplify this. First three numbers, 64, that's a plus 5, minus 24, Ooh, that's negative 19, and that becomes 45. Okay, basically, using diagonals, you take the first two columns, copy them, so that you have uh, these diagonals. So, 1, 2, 3, and then you add those, and go the other way, 1, 2, 3. Alright, let's do another example. Some of you might like this better. I don't know why I don't like it. <laughs> All right, that's the matrix we want to find a determinant of. We're going to copy the first two columns. One, three, eight. One, nine, seven. We're going to multiply diagonally. 1 times 9 times 4, 36, plus 1 times 5 times 8 is 40. 1 times 3 times 7, 21. Now I'm going the other direction. We're subtracting those. 8 times 9 times 1, 72. 7 times 5 times 1, 35. 4 times 3 times 1, 12. Work all that out. And what do we get? Well, here. 76, 9, hmm? 76 plus 21 is 97. Is that right? Minus 72, minus 35, minus 107, minus 12. Yeah, sorry, I'm not using the calculator. What is that? Negative 22. Okay. Sorry if my mumbling is distracting. You can work it out. All right, moving on. I'm going to do one more example. This will be the last example. So if you, once I write the determinant, you can pause it and work it out on your own. See if you get the same answer I do. There's a determinant. Go ahead, pause it, find the value. Okay, so I'm copying the first two columns. I am multiplying diagonally. 8 times 5 is 40, times 3 is 120. Oh boy, he's getting big. 
negative 9 times 4 is negative 36 times 6 is negative 216. Then we have 0 times blah, blah, blah. Well, 0 times anything is 0. Uh, remember, that that's a plus negative. I got lazy and just wrote minus. Going this way, it's going to be 0. Negative. So it's a minus a negative 64. Minus a negative 27. So that's negative 96. The zeros don't contribute anything. And we got plus 64 and plus 27. And those two, we get 91. Or negative 90. Or positive 91. Sorry. Final answer, negative 5. That's it. If this looks familiar, it's because it was example three in the expansion by minors. Uh, you can now decide which what technique you like better. I do suggest that you still learn the expansion by minors, even if you don't like that technique. That technique becomes useful when you do vectors, which is not covered in algebra two, or is it? I don't know. I haven't thought of that far yet. Okay, that's it. Bye bye.